Okay, this is part two of the video on sine and cosine graphs. We just have a couple more examples to finish up, and um, I got caught off because the other one was so long, so sorry about that. Okay, example number two, we're talking about the original cosine graph, the one we did on the front side of our notes, and our g of x is 2 cosine 2x. Two the 2 took, take, takes place of an a value, which means it's going to change my amplitude. The b is being multiplied by the x, so that's something that's going to change my period. Now, the first thing that I want to do is point out that 2 is going to be my new amplitude. Remember the word amplitude means highest point and lowest point. This 2 is going to change my period. So, my new amplitude is 2 pi divided by that b. 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. So now, what took our original period was 2 pi. What took 2 pi to get accomplished will now be accomplished in pi. So, let's go ahead and draw our x and y axis here. Remember, this is really our cosine and our theta axis, if you want to relabel those. Our normal one happens in 2 pi, so I'm going to go ahead and draw 2 pi out there. I'm going to draw those in between marks, so pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. My amplitude was originally 1, so 1 and negative 1. My new amplitude is 2, so I also want to include 2 and negative 2. That will become important. On my original cosine graph, let's take a look at that. I start at 1, halfway I'm at negative 1, at the end I'm back at positive 1. Halfway in between those two points I'm at 0. So we're going to do that again. We're going to start here at 1. After 2 pi, we're going to end at 1. Halfway in between, I've got negative 1. And halfway in between those two, I've got 0. And so I'm going to go ahead and graph that out. Now, I'm making these totally stop because I'm just showing you one period. Understand that they could continue out. I'm just not going to worry about that just yet. We'll have time to digest that more a little bit later. Okay, for my g of x graph, my amplitude is 2. That's going to be my highest point and my lowest point. My period is pi. So what used to start at 1 and end at 1 is now going to start at 2 and end at 2 within pi. So I'm going to do that here and here. Halfway in between, it'll be at the bottom at negative 2. And halfway in between those marks, here and here, it'll be at 0. The halfway in between pi over 2, you know it's pi over 4. So if you wanted to label that, you could. I'm not going to, but just so you kind of understand, that's how the graph is being transformed. And let's go ahead and draw one more of those. At 2 pi, it will have done it again. So we'll mark all of our relevant points. Be sure you're trying to draw those kind of curved. See, some of mine are getting a little bit straight. We want to try to avoid that if we can. These are definitely curved lines. The third and final example that I would like to show you is if f of x equals the cosine of x. So cosine is the original here. g of x is negative cosine of 4x. Now, a negative means that it's reflected or flipped. So this one is going to be flipped. And that's because of that negative sign. The only way we flip is over the x-axis, so don't worry about that. We're never going to flip over the y. So it'll be negative, flip. There's something being multiplied by x, so I have a new period, which is 2 pi over 4. 2 pi divided by 4 is pi over 2, so my new period is pi over 2. That'll happen very quickly in respect to what we're used to. So for f of x, We'll have 1 and negative 1. That's our normal amplitude. We'll go all the way to 2 pi. That's our normal period. We'll do the halfway marks in between. We know that cosine starts and ends at 1 on the original graph. The midpoint is negative 1. And the points in between are 0. So let's go ahead and draw that out. That's the first one. For our g of x, it's flipped. Now, for what it means for it to be flipped, instead of starting at 1, if I reflect that, it's going to start at negative 1. Because it starts at negative 1, it also ends there. The new period is pi over 2, so it ends after just pi over 2. The halfway mark would then be pi over 4. That's where it would be up here at 1. Halfway between that would be at 0. And that would be at pi over 8, which is not something we've talked about in our unit circle, but it's just another value. And we're going to continue to do that over and over again we'll see that we can complete several revolutions in the same amount of time that it took us to complete just the one. And you'll see that 
the errors that I'm making might help you to make less errors. Probably a good, good idea to draw those points in so that you have a goal mark of what to hit. You end up with a funky graph. Another good reason to be using pencils so that if you do, you can always go back and fix it. And that's what my graph would look like. That's the end of the notes on sine and cosine. The assignment is A6, and that's a worksheet. Let me know if you have questions.